Hi, I'm Claire Tompkins, the Clutter Coach, and this is the Organize Your Life podcast. I am passionate about organizing because it makes my clients' lives so much easier, more relaxed, and with more time to spend the way they want to. That's what organizing is all about, not about being neat or having the right containers. It's about getting more time for what matters to you. My specialty is chunking down this big topic so it's not overwhelming. That's the concept behind my book, Five Minutes to a Relaxing Bedroom. And that's the concept for this podcast, too, which is based on my first book, 52 Simple Ways to Get Organized. Both books are available on my website and on Amazon. In every podcast, I'll lay out a simple organizing concept and tell you why it's important. I'll include an action step at the end so you can start practicing right away. Okay, here we go. Welcome to podcast number 20 about back-to-school paper management. While researching this podcast, I came across several websites advising moms to go through their children's backpacks and deal with all that paper in there, including homework, forms that need to be filed, etc. Why is this mom's job? Just as the kids should start doing chores at home as soon as they're able, they should start taking responsibility for managing their school lives. Have a specific spot for them to put their stuff when they get home from school. Then pick a time to go through the backpacks with them, right after school, right after dinner, whatever works best for you. Each child can sort the paper into homework she needs to take to her desk and do, and timely forms she needs to give to mom, for example. Papers that are mom's responsibility should have a place to go that are easy for the kids to access so that they end up somewhere that mom can find them later, not buried on a desk or a counter or mashed in the bottom of the backpack. As for mom or dad, how do you manage the rest of the paper? Well, the first line of defense is always to toss out what you don't need right away. The everyday homework, the not-so-great art, the flyers or letters with information you don't need to know. Develop your gatekeeper skills now to save oodles of time sorting through that mountain of paper later. So, what kind of paper is this that comes from school? It's reference, action, schoolwork, and art. Reference papers are forms that are good for the entire school year, calendars, contact lists, rules, policies, things like that. I know a lot of people like binders for those papers. I personally dislike them, partly because I've more than once gotten a finger caught in the closing rings. Ouch! But there are two other good reasons not to use binders. One is that they fill up fast. Once they're full, you have to start a new one, and then it gets confusing. Which is the first one? Which is the second one? And what's in which one? The second reason is that many of the papers you need to add need to be hole-punched first. That makes it a two-step process. Punch the paper, open the binder rings, file the paper. If your paper punch is right next to the binder and it's chained down so that nobody makes off with it, well, lucky you. It's still more work than using folders. I suggest regular old file folders, either in a file box or a drawer if you manage family paper at a desk. Easier in, easier out, and easier to expand as needed. But as with anything else I recommend, if you really love binders and they work for you, use them. Using what already works for you is always better than starting from scratch with something that might be better, no matter what the experts might say. The next is action papers. These are the obvious things like forms you need to sign and return with your kid to school. Upcoming event announcements is another. If the event is relevant, add it to your family calendar. If it's not, throw it out. If you need to take more action, such as reserving a spot or paying a fee, add that to your to-do list. Once the action is done, throw out the paper, unless you receive no other confirmation and you need it for reference. Schoolwork is up next. What you keep is up to you, but generally people want to keep the work that displays a lot of their child. In other words, stories that they write rather than spelling tests. If you're unwilling to be ruthless, make sure you take time once or twice a year to review what you've saved before the next year starts the paper blizzard all over again. You can involve your kids in this too. Teaching kids about organizing and sorting is always a good idea. Your kids grow out of clothes and toys, and you get them out of the house, maybe by donating them. The paper they generate can be sorted as well. What's worth keeping? That's the criteria to develop. Maybe reports they spend a lot of time on and are proud of? That could be one. I kept a model of the Great Sphinx that I made out of plastic clay as part of a project on ancient Egypt for a long, long time, and I still remember it fondly. If you or your kids balk at parting with very much, consider photographing the items. Take pictures of the items alone or with the kid in question holding them. 
That can help keep the physical quantity of stuff down. Finally, there's artwork. Kids, especially small ones, are art-making machines. Display their work in a rotating gallery. Traditionally, it's on the refrigerator. But you can use a bulletin board or a hanging wire with clips, too. The secret here is the word rotate. There's limited space, so things can't stay displayed forever. Once works are off display, you might be ready to get rid of them right away. Another great idea is to select works to send off to grandma or some other relatives or close friends who would appreciate them. For the ones you keep, file them away for the summer break to review. At that point, you can sort through them and pick out the best ones to keep, again with kids' input. Also give them space to keep the things they like best, separate from what you're keeping for your own memories. How much you keep is totally up to you, controlled by how much space you have for it as well, unless you embrace that picture-taking strategy. Right now, your task is to set up a place to file all that paper that's going to come blasting in, or may already have started. I recommend a file box for reference papers, perhaps color-coded by child. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm Claire Tompkins, The Clutter Coach. If you like the show, I'd love it if you'd leave a rating and review it in iTunes. It's also available in SoundCloud and Stitcher, and you can review it there, too. And you can subscribe, so the podcast will be ready and waiting for you to listen to. You'll find the show notes on my blog at www.cluttercoach.net, and you can check out my store to find books I've written and books and products I recommend, plus some freebies. And come back for more next week. Next week.